In the second part of my interview with Natania Bassi, the beloved gospel artist, we talk global impact and family. This is James Talk Africa. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to the concluding part of my interview with Nathaniel Bassi, the gospel artist from Nigeria. But before I do that, let me tell you a bit about Chad. It's a country in West Africa with 14 million people. And though Chad is a majority Muslim country, it's one of the very few Muslim countries where Christian workers will find such openness and access and where the government is truly secular in its operations. This is really important because it's harvest time in Chad. The number of Muslims seeking to know Christ has continued to grow in recent years, yet the need is huge. There are more unrich people in Chad than in any other African country, and most of these are Muslims. It's harvest time in Chad. The harvest is plentiful and ready, but the laborers are few. Will you go? If you're interested in helping with the harvest in Chad, please contact us on the numbers on your screen. I believe that God is raising a mighty missionary force all across Africa. Uh, a, a new day is coming all over Africa. Now let's go to my second, uh, second part of my interview with Nathaniel Bassi. Don't go away. Thank you so much. When it comes to this uh, issue of uh, your ministry, last year you started what you call the Hallelujah Challenge. Uh, the one yeah. that uh, you invited people to join you, was it at midnight or? At midnight, At yes. midnight for one hour? Yes. Did you expect you would have up to 70,000 people at the stage joining you? Absolutely <laughs> not. Um, we, we were in Israel um, in April. I mean, there's been lots of prophetic words over my life. You're going to, you know, spearhead revival. You're going to do this and that, you know, from many men of God. But then when Israel in April, May, and, you know, there was this word that there was going to be an outbreak of God's spirit and there was going to be a revival. So I came back in May and because I've, I've learned that, you know, you don't just sit back with the prophetic word, you know. Paul said to Timothy, you have to wage war with the prophetic word you have. I love that. I love that. You don't just sit back. You don't sit back. That is, you, know? uh, you don't get a prophetic word to be a spectator. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I, you know, I'm stopping you because this is something I love to emphasize. Uh, the fact that uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, it says we will walk in the light of his prophecy. Hmm. So it's actually you receive a prophecy. It says the days to come, the mountain of the Lord will be higher than I all the mountains mountain. of the world. Then it ends up by saying we're going to walk in the light of that prophecy. Oh, yes. That means you receive a prophecy to initiate your participation. Please oh, go yes. on. And I Jesus says it <laughs> this way in his language. Pray that your, his kingdom come, come and will be done. So, wow, wow. So, um, and then I went back and you know, I just felt this leading to pray in the month of May mm. for one hour at midnight. So I called it the tongue challenge. Yeah. So the same, I Did mean... Did you invite people? Yeah, I just went, I mean, I went online. I just mm. said, hey, I mean, is anybody there who wants to pray? But that wasn't that big because it wasn't it was organized like... Okay. Prayer. So, I mean, we had a, you know, a fair crowd, 400, mm. 700 people. Yeah. So yeah. we would pray and people had testimonies, you know, and then we would... We rounded off somewhere a hall. We got a hall. It was packed, and people mm. came, and we prayed. And just as I was running off, I felt the Lord say to me, praise me for one hour from June, okay? And the anchor scripture was um, Acts 16 from, I think, 25 to 27. You know, the scripture about Paul and Silas mm. in prison, and then at midnight they prayed, and the prison doors were open. There was an earthquake. So that was the anchor scripture. So we began day one. I mean, day one because... I had no intention to break your record. It wasn't, it was just out of a pure heart. So I, I had my white singlet on. <laughs> you were just doing your normal. So I was in the dark, the, the room was dark. I had one orange um, shaker, you know. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, and, you know, we praise God. And then uh, from 200, 400, 
and then day four, day five, someone said to me, hey, do you know that 2,000 people just joined you, you know, For this just shaking praise. this? And then some people were writing, how could a guy with a, a, a skinny guy with, <laughs> with a trunk you evening. know, just attract 2,000? <laughs> then it was 4,000, then it was 7,000, 13,000, then it was 24,000, and then it became 50,000, 70,000. And 70, then it 000. got on CNN. I, I, I watched your interview on <laughs> CNN, and then CNN said, hey, man, I mean, could you grant us an in interview? And interestingly, I was going around the world ministering, so wherever I was, I would gather people. Okay, you know. so the Hallelujah Challenge didn't stop your itinerant ministry? No, it didn't stop. You, you just... Know, I was in London, we had people. I was in Dallas, we wherever had Wherever you were, you connected your phone, yes, or, my phone. or device to and yourself. And that's the blessing of the internet. <laughs> so, you know, you know, we just connected, and we just saw God just do his thing. Now, know. people said, do it the next month, and your reaction was like, God hasn't told me. Uh, speak a bit about that because there's a way the branding, e the branding generation we're in. No. You something works, you brand it, no, and no, then no, you no. you continue to do it every June or every month. You so, you <laughs> you don't want to do stuff like that <laughs> by your strength because you know, whilst it's you know it's blessing people, there's such reaction from hell. Yeah. You know, you see, I'm shooting from my home. You're exposing yourself, your yeah. family. People are healed. People are touched. And hell would react. Yeah. So you don't want to go on that assignment if God didn't send you. If you were not told to do it. You know, remember, his grace goes where his will is. Wow. His resources goes where his will is. Mm. Where if, 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 he sponsor, if, he, if he called it, then he would sponsor it. Yeah. So it's not something... Many times people don't know when I, I close at 12 at night, I don't sleep. I have to pray through wow. the night. So uh, I'm not eating. And even during the day, you know, your, I mean, your, your whole system. So it's, 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 it's intense. It's, it's, in, it's actually very intense. intense. You know, the... It's, we, it's, we see the outside, that Ariel. We see the we see the glamour of having uh, that poster. That there's a there's there's a big conference coming up, and Nathaniel Bass's face is up there. We see him being called up before the large crowds of thousands, but we don't see the back room of agony of seeking the I Lord. I mean, the spiritual backlash, then the then the bloggers, then the critics, yeah. you know, who just say, I mean, you're just joking. Who is this joker? I mean, there's somebody who wants money again and attacking you. The miracles are fake, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, your family is under intense pressure and everybody knows you. You can't, your wife. So, it's, it's not something... I won't even do it. I mean, I have people saying to me, oh, can't you do one, you know, Christmas is coming, the air is rising. I'm like, I've not heard from the Lord. So. The Lord has to command me to, what has been the toughest moment in this ministry? I mean, if you look back and you go like, this is, it might have been a criticism, it might be a tough trial or something, as much as you're able to share, what, what comes to mind when you think of a moment that you, that you found really challenging? Um, to be honest, um, Many, the, the Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous. Many. So, um, but we go from victory to victory. I think one of my strongest points would be the ability to just look at those things and just say it's part of the mm. package. But um, sometime this year, my wife was almost at the verge of dying. Mm. I think I shared the mm. testimony. Mm. It was it's such an incredible miracle. Mm. I, I, I had to minister with Pastor Adebo in yeah. Canada for a, a, a conference in the U.S., which I had to cancel because mm. she had to be rushed. And it was just, and that would have been one of the toughest times. And that season, I also had the challenge, yeah. you know, praising God at 12 midnight. Yeah. So I would finish the praise challenge mm. at 1 o'clock and drive to the hospital. To go and see her. See my wife. And the nurses would say to me, oh, Pastor, we joined you online. And they are the same ones taking care of my wife. Yes. So you you're know, going through your trial and yeah, you're still ministry. Trial, still ministry. Wow. And I, I, and, and, and I, and I, I really saw that God used that even mm. as, as a weapon yes. of deliverance. You know, Amen. the Bible says, you are my hiding place and you come and fill my heart with songs, songs of, of deliverance. deliverance. So it was in that season, I, we began to sing the song, your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Wow. To you belong So that's the song that came out from that season. Yeah. And, and, and interesting, it's going to be on the new 
album. It's in the new. It's in the new, album. In the new album, which the new you, album, which came out in uh, December. You December launched the second. Yes. You launched a new album in December the second. Jesus, the resurrection and, and the life. And the life. Is, and it's yes. uh, available on, uh, on iTunes, iTunes, Amazon, and all the digital places yes. anywhere in the world. Any major platform. What What excites you about this new album? Well, I mean, you've had many albums, but what's what stands out for you? If you talking to the guy at home, like this for me personally is what blesses me. You mentioned one, which is yes. the song that came out of that yeah. season. Yeah. What else excites you about it? I think the, the revelation behind the album, the theme, Jesus, the, revela the resurrection, resurrection and the and life. The life. Yeah. So um, normally I get a word for a project. So if, if God's putting Jesus, resurrection and the life in my spirit to sing, which then becomes the anthem of the body. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always share that I've, before a new move comes a new sound. Yeah. So, you know, God will normally put the sound in his psalmist and then we proclaim it and then the body begins to go in that direction. Direction. So before you a know, new move, a new song will come. A new song, a new mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. So um, we're proclaiming him as a resurrection and a life and that's based on John 11 where Lazarus died and Jesus was, you know, turned late. Yes. You know, he went there and he said, okay, um, he said to them, do you believe, you know, he can come back? Mm. And they said, no, 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 well, we believe sometime in resurrection and life. Jesus said, no, 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 that's not a day, it's a person, I'm here. Wow. <laughs> you know, and, you know, Lazarus came the back. The resurrection is here, the yeah. life is here. So it excites me to know that as we proclaim him as that, I mean, dead things, things that have Amen. died and been Amen. buried, you know, Amen. in our lives, Amen. in our work. Look at this, and then we'll chat. Uh, this is just an amateur. This was actually as my wife's, wow. my wife's uh, birthday, 50th wow. birthday. And you wow. see the 
white guys, they are singing email. Wow, wow. <laughs> they're singing email and they're singing wow. it so well. Wow. The, 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 what touched my heart is that they fell in love with that song. And Natalia, this brings to mind, I've always wondered that in the past we sing the Hills song and we sing the Bethel and what else, Planet Shakers and all the rest. But you don't find, you didn't used to find in the white congregations in the West, uh, I have a little exposure to them, that they don't see, they didn't used to sing many of our songs. And I used to grapple with this. Is it that, is it a lack of professionalism? Is it the timing? What's your take on it and what are you seeing God do now? Um, if, a few years ago, we were in um, the University of Lagos ministering with a friend of mine. Mm. I mean, he had this worship meeting, and while we're ministering, it became a, like a prophetic worship meeting. So we kept saying that there was a sound rising from Africa, that there was a sound coming from the desert lands wow. to the distant lands, and that in a matter of time, you know, um, songs from Africa will be sung in nations of the earth. And um, we're seeing them come to pass. Okay. You know, so we're, we're, we've just watched so it's a video. Now. Yeah, we're seeing. Yeah, um, of course, in the video. <laughs> um, they're, they're, I mean, I go to Caucasian churches in the in, West. In the West, and you hear them sing literally not just English, African songs, but you know, indigenous songs with uh, indigenous languages. You know, um, singing and really blessed by them. And we're seeing the word of God come to pass. And I think that speaks of something greater. Coming, yeah. you know, I, I had said that before a move of God will come a sound. Yes. You know, the prophet in um, Second King said, bring me a minstrel. Yeah. You know, when he played, mm -hmm. when there was a sound, yeah. then the hand of God moved. Yeah. You know, in the book of Acts, there was, there came a rushing mighty wind. There yeah. was a sound from was heaven. A sound. And then there was, you know, cloven fire. There was a move of coming the Coming upon them, So yeah. I think that, you know, Beyond the songs and the worship, I mean, we see gospel, you yeah. know, we receive the gospel yeah. from the West. Now we're taking it back. Uh, I see that it will go beyond just music, beyond worship. Yeah. I see that a time will come, Africa would export things to the West. Wow, you wow. know, I mean, though, I am seeing that there will be cars from Africa. Wow. Taken to the West. Amen. There will be, you know, I mean, we won't just export our raw materials. We'll be exporting our finished, finished products. products. So we're going away from being consumers Consum to be From producers. being a consumer continent and nation yeah. to being um, producers, wow. to being inventors. And innovators. And, and you know, innovators. So, so the sound is going ahead before the, even the, the move. move. You know, wow. there's going to be a spiritual renaissance, mm. uh, economic renaissance, social, and you know, every other kind of revival. So. And I, I really totally agree with you from where I stand in my work as a missionary. I see God relying more and more on the African church to take care of the last oh, harvest. Yes. Oh, yes. And like you said, there is a move of God where he's calling us away from looking at our brokenness and our mess to see our responsibility. Yeah. To actually see that to whom much is given and there seems to be a weight upon us now. in spite of our ugliness. Now, isn't that the wisdom of God that from Bethlehem, from the, from Little, you know, almost wretched. Yeah. Bethlehem will come the greatest gift of all. That's Jesus. So. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I see Africa as that Bethlehem. You know that they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> oh, yes. Can anything? In fact, it was um, Nathaniel who said that. Yes. Your namesake. Yeah. Who <laughs> said that. So, you know, so I mean, He was I, a doubter, but you were a believer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but so I, 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 see, I see God do great things. Yeah. And he's doing that. And in, in, time, in times to come, it will further intensify. And um, as, we, as we just look to him, as we make him our focus, you know, um, it can be tough. Sometimes in, in moves of God, people get distracted. You know, we begin to build, you know, these kingdoms for ourselves. Yeah. If we, if we would look ourselves small in our eyes, not, not low self-esteem, but, but humility. But humility. True humility. Seeing that, you know, of ourselves we can do nothing. But it's, it's him, as Paul says, um, that Christ lives in me mm. and the life that I live, I live through the faith of the Son of God. So if we keep making him our focus, God's sure going to do great things through us. I agree with you because, you know, just a few days ago, I was r having my quiet time. and It dawned on me where Jesus said that, take my yoke upon you and you would have rest for your soul. 
And then he goes on to say, uh, because I'm humble and, because and I'm, I, meek, and I'm meek and lowly in heart. Mm. And he was talking about humility. And I saw that what he was calling us to, this yoke is a humility thing. Mm. And that humility was the key to the anointing. It's the key to that rest yes. that we seek. And it, it dawned on me, like you're saying, how crucial humility is in this last move of God. Uh, where the devil is like, causing some people to be tempted to discard it as, wow, to be, to be out there advertising yourself, trying to prove you're bigger than everybody is the way out. God is calling his remnant back to this place of, come to me, take my yoke upon you. I'm lowly, learn of me, learn this humility from me, and then you will see rest for your soul. And you know, every time I think of humility, I think, I, I, I think of the word humiliated, because the, the <laughs> word humility is from humiliated. So it's not we something... Don't, we, don't, we don't like those yeah, two yeah. So together. It's, it's not something you get passively, mm. you know. The Bible says Jesus made himself of no reputation. I've seen that God would sometimes put you through, or use the word, allow, allow you to go you. through seasons mm. or situations of humiliation. Mm. I mean, I've, I've been through that where you go to places and I've traveled to places and, you know, people who invited you, you know, didn't pay your bills. Make they locked you up in, in the hotel rooms. Mm. You know, the hotel lo locked you up. Yeah. The airlines didn't pick us and we wow. at the airport. You it know, just made no sense of you. And then the Holy Spirit is saying, how, how, how are you going to react to this? Wow. So God says to you, this is a test. You know, wow. You know, you have to pass this wow. test. Wow. And then, you know, you come back and your team says to you, let's write them a sting. Let's how deal you with do them. That? And then the Holy Spirit says to you, tell them you've forgiven them. Tell them you understand. Tell them, and, I'm, and, and you're writing that, and you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then every time you go through that, something happens. Something elevation. Happens. Elevation. Humility. Yeah. Being humble yes. brings elevation. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's the way we rise in the kingdom. Philippians isn't, isn't, 2, isn't that, that, that is such a great thing we need to rediscover in our day. Before we, we're, we're having to land here, and I'll see if I'll take one or two questions. I want to talk about your family. You never put up pictures of your wife. I mean, maybe it's me. I, well, I, I have, I've been looking. I haven't seen. Uh, I do you, from, I, from... For me, from I have two time. assumptions. Either you are trying to protect them or your wife is like my wife who doesn't like all these uh, social media things. I will say both. Um, from time to time, I, I, I will do. I, I know there was a put I put up, uh, a post I put up a month ago about my wife just, you know, saying, just being grateful for her being my wife because mm. she pays a huge price mm. for what I do, just allowing me to travel the world. Yeah, but then also you want to, you know, protect them. And then my wife was also a little bit laid back in terms of media, mm. publicity. She yeah. likes to be at the back. Even in church, she doesn't want to sit near the pastors. Mm -hmm. So she sits at the, at the back. At the back, praying. You know, so, yeah, it's both of them. But she's, she's comfortable just being mm. in the background, you know, taking care of the children and praying. You know, she's such an amazing woman. I probably wouldn't be here if I didn't marry her. That's beautiful. That's yes, beautiful. So. Thank you so much, Natalia, because you are in your place. Not only have you found grace, but we are finding grace through the grace that flows from you. Thank amazing. you so much for coming Thank on the so show. Much, Let's friend. give him a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Like Nathaniel Bassi said, there's a new sound going out of Africa. That's why I want to conclude by sharing this message titled Africa on Fire with you. In Revelations 12, 12, we read, the devil has gone down to you. He's filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. I stand to be corrected, but there are very few continents in the world today. I don't see any other continent on earth today where one can find the kind of spiritual warfare that is going on right now in Africa. From Cape Town to Cairo, it is as if the devil in his fury is working relentlessly to light fires in Africa. Whether it's from bad government to racial conflicts, Africa indeed seems to be on fire. But though this is what is mostly re most reported in the news, it's not 
at all all the most important type of fireborn in Africa today. One doesn't even have to look too closely to see that this other fire that I'm talking about is really burning. I'm, I'm talking about revival fire. Since around the mid-1950s, God has been moving in unprecedented ways to sweep across Africa and to win her nations. Missiologic predi missiologists predicted a while back that soon there will be more Christians in Africa than on any other continent in the world. In, in fact, in the last decade, as church leaders worldwide have observed the growing indigenous missionary movements coming out of Africa, God's purpose for setting Africa on fire is becoming clear. God's purpose is this. It is to not only win Africa, but also to use her for the remaining tax of world evangelization. All over Africa today, God is God's fire is burning, stretching out to claim all the unreached frontiers within the animistic and Islamic bloc. At the same time, he has been trusting out Africans like firebrands across the unreached all over the world, from Poland to Indonesia. It is exactly because of this that high-level dark forces are working hard to quench God's purpose in Africa through bad government, disease, poverty, war, idol worship and Islam. The crisis in Africa cannot be understood except when viewed from a spiritual perspective. The devil sees that he's rapidly losing ground and seeks to counter God's fire. The contention is over the remaining more than 200 largely unevangelized tribes on the continent, as well as the hundreds of others around the world that God purposes to use Africa to reach. So the enemy works to waste Africa resources, uh, so that there will be no funds to send out missionaries. He brings crisis so that there will be no one able to go into those areas and preach the gospel. Also, Islam and false religions are working hard to get to the many remaining unreached peoples of Africa before the truth gets to them. Truly, Africa is on fire. Now, the whole purpose of my drawing your attention to all of this is because I believe that the outcome of this intense spiritual struggle in Africa depends, on a great, it depends a great deal on what you do or don't do. Each of us has a part to play to see the working out of God's purpose for Africa. There are various ways God will lead us as to our involvement if we would ask him. But I want to end by highlighting two very important areas in which all of us, no matter what our location is on the globe, should seek to be involved. The first and by far the most important is prayer. Let us get on our knees, find the flames of God, and quench hell's fire in Africa. The second is partnership. We need to join hands together to see God's purposes come to pass in Africa. None of us can do it alone. We together need to share our resources and empower the move of God across Africa. I believe we can give the devil's fire, give the devil fire for fire and show him that God's fire swallows up hell's fire. Let's do it. Now, let me pray. Father, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in Africa. Please raise up in our day an army of laborers to finish the task of enriching Africa and who will also go beyond Africa. Let righteousness and justice flood this great continent in our day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me this week. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Contact us on any of those contacts on the screen. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Next week on Chimstock Africa, Dr. Taki Dube is a medical doctor and pastor of the popular Itekweni Community Church in Durban, South Africa. I chat with her about her past divorce and the restorative work of God in her life. I remember everybody was talking about, hey, you've got to get married while you're still at medical school, hey, because once you go out, all the men are afraid of you. Once you're a doctor, nobody wants to marry you. And I'm thinking, I don't want to grow old alone. I definitely want to get married. Next week on Chimstock Africa. This program is made possible by the generous financial support of believers just like you who share our heart to equip the African church to engage the issues facing our continent. Your financial support will help us continue this important work. If you feel led to give to this ministry, please visit our website today.